back to the channel. Today we're going to go through yet another step in the process of getting the car closer to race ready. Um, even since the last video I've got a lot done which I didn't film because some of it's kind of boring and monotonous and all that good stuff but this one's a pretty cool subject. So what I'm holding here is a couple of 210 pound injectors that are fitted in this little block and that's kind of loud. But anyways, uh, so I'm a, I'll show you up close what I got here. So what you're looking at, uh, like I said just a second ago, is a couple of 210 pound injectors uh, fitted in this block. As you can see, it's already machined with the holes all the way through it and everything. Uh, this was just kind of a test, um, more for spacing this way than anything. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to machine the actual pieces um, that are going to get welded in the intake track uh, like this and like this. So there's going to be four 210 pound injectors um, shooting straight M1 methanol into the intake track up here, which is the reason why I got away from the intercooler in the first place. So um, let's get started on it. Okay, so even though I, I did draw this up in CAD, I'm kind of a visual person and I wanted to see if the spacing was kind of what I had in mind. This is the actual material I'm going to use, um, which you can see is a little bit different than that. Uh, no particular reason. This is just what was in the scrap rack and it looked like a good size for what I want to do. So why not? So we're going to get this cut up, put it in the machine, put the holes in it, and we're actually going to cut a radius the long way um, across that part right there so that it saddles on the tube correctly. And it makes it easy to weld and looks good and all that neat stuff. All right, we already got the little blocks set up, laid out, got a good idea where I want things to be. Had it set up in the machine, got the machine set up, so we're ready to make some chips on the meth injector bung weld plates. That's what we're gonna call them, I think. Maybe something new, I don't know. All right, so the spacing between the two is one and three eighths, but I'm coming off the middle of the block, so that's gonna be 687 either way, or 11 sixteenths. Three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, two, four, six, and seven. Last but not least, these are the holes we're going to use for the, how we're gonna bolt these rails down. And of course my favorite part, the power tapping where you don't even have to touch the tap wrench. Okay, so for the next part, we have to turn the machine head way over to the side like this. Um, and the angle really isn't important, but we want to cut a radius 
across both of those blocks. And the only purpose of the radius is to make sure that the block sits down flat on the tube uh, where we're going to weld it. And that's that's really about it. It's uh, You could probably weld it without cutting the radius, but I want the injectors as far down or as close to the airstream as possible. And the only way to do that is to cut the radius like we had talked about. So let's get this machine turned over to some arbitrary angle. We don't really care what it is. Okay, so getting the machine set up to do this was not as easy as I had hoped. Nowhere near it. So we're going to video this little debacle and see how it turns out. Um, the camera could very well get wiped out by flying metal pieces that aren't supposed to be flying, but hey, that's why we're here. So let's check it out and see what it does. Okay, so we didn't have to change anything on the machine in the y-axis because the the nothing changed in the y-axis. We're still lined up on the center line. The cutter is going to cut the radius in it this way and uh, We'll see how it works, I guess. Okay, first cut is 30 thousandths. May the force be with us. I'm here to tell you that worked far better than I ever dreamed of. You couldn't even hear it cutting. All right, and I think you can see that there. The injector's still down in the hole, probably, I don't know, 150 thousandths or so. So we're gonna take that down a little bit further. All right, that is exactly what we are looking for. So the, the tip of the injector, and it's kind of sitting in there funny right now, the tip of the injector is going to sit flush with the interior of the tube when we get it all welded up. So the spray pattern of the injector will not get interrupted by having to pass through the tube or anything like that. I think it's gonna work out really good. Okay, so we got the top part of the meth setup or the, the fuel rail part of it done, uh, or laid out, I should say. I didn't show you that part because it's pretty much the same thing we did earlier but this is what they look like. Um, got the holes already in them. So the last part that we have to do is drill the mounting holes in them right there and uh, the machine work part will be done. Okay, we got that little step finished up there. You can see the bolt holes in the bottom of it. Uh, they bolt down just kind of like a, I don't know, like an Edelbrock uh, EFI intake does. Um, they have the little U-shaped deal that bolts to it right there. So nothing uh, crazy there. So now we're gonna lay it out and get it ready to get it welded up. Okay, I don't really have any specific uh, angle of the dangle that I'm trying to uh, come up with here other than making sure the hood closes, um, making sure these lines and things are low enough. So I'm just gonna mark it where I like it to be. Something like that. And then, We'll do this side the same way. And again, I'm just, I, the only thing I'm worried about is the hood closing right here. So I don't think the orientation is going to have any effect on it. Something like that. All right. I think you can see that in the camera. So it's going to be here and here. So now we scribe the lines so I can go back and clean these up really good. All right, let's get it cleaned up and get it ready to weld. All right, time to get it tacked in place. You can't really see anything from that view because I got it 
kind of clamped in the vise and with some uh, uh, vice grip clamps. So we'll get it tack in place and turned over real quick. Okay, now we've got everything welded up. We have to go ahead and put the hole through the pipe in those four places where the tip of the injector is going to poke through there. So what we're gonna to do uh, to do that accurately is we're going to use a transfer punch. And for those of you who don't know, let me see if I can get you a little close up there what a transfer punch looks like. There you go. So that transfer punch, the outside of the transfer punch matches up with the size of the hole that I drilled through those aluminum blocks. And that little point will put a spot right where we want to drill the hole. So let me bring you down where you can get a close look at it. Okay, transfer punches down inside the block. We'll just take a quick little hit right there. Both of them. We'll use a small drill just to put a little pilot down in there. Now this hole will, is for the clearance for the tip of the injector. We've got everything welded up and deburred and cleaned up. So now we are ready to put them in the charge pipe and see what it looks like. All right, and there's our rail. All right, let's put the second one in there. So the last little pieces are going to be a U-shaped piece that bolts to these holes and goes around this and then a bolt goes through here. Uh, and I think I explained it earlier, it's kind of like the Edelbrock fuel rails uh, on a EF, one of their EFI intakes. Okay guys, one more video in the books. Uh, we got one big project out of the way, that was the methanol injection setup. Um, if you didn't catch it earlier in the video, those are four 210 pound injectors that I'm going to put straight M1 methanol into the intake tract. Um, and, uh, mainly in hopes of getting the air charge temperatures down, uh, considerably without having an intercooler. Um, but that's about it. So I think that's probably a good place to end the video. I'm not sure what we're going to do next. There's still a whole bunch of stuff to get done. I think you can probably see some of it back here on the board. Um, that list just goes all the way down the bottom of the board. We mark some off and then it just comes right back. Um, eventually we'll run out of things to do. I don't know when that is, but nonetheless, we are making progress. So as usual, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you made it this far, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you haven't. And when you do subscribe, be sure and hit the bell notification so you get notifications when we do new uploads. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next video.